Oké. Okay. CBR 500R. I wanted to do the fire blade. But it was taken right in front of me. And the other guy there was also wanting to do the fire blade. And I don't have that much time to wait today. So the CBR 500R. Ooh. Oh, dead are brakes. And obviously the seating position is very up front, very downward. I'm quite a big person, the bike is quite low. So we shall see how it will handle. Not quite sure if it has a quick shifter, but it does clusters upshift anyway, so I haven't driven a sports bike in a long time. Last time probably was my old GPZ 400 Kawasaki. Oh, but the mirrors are so far away. So it's been a long time since I drove a sports bike. One of those things that you always seem to forget when riding one is how limited flexible your wrists are. This one also includes the time again about half an hour which is great because after that I have to leave anyway so you can jump on the XT and drive away. Now if you have watched the other two Honda first impressions then you know that this is not a review of the bike it is a first impression another thing that's good to know is that like all the other Hondas um, your horn is above your indicators and it's a very very big button at this moment I'm quite used to it so it's not that big of a problem but it is something you need to get used to first bump not that great then again that's not what you anticipate from a sports bike <laughs> obviously you can stand on a sports bike so so let's the motorcycle do the job for you the work for you <laughs> the interesting thing is this one feels faster, but when you look at your dashboard, it isn't. <laughs> the African Twin was still the fastest too on these corners, on these roads. Which makes sense, obviously, but still. I'm clearly, personally, not a very big favorite of the sport bike genre. Not because I don't like sport bikes or I don't like acceleration, but because the way you're sitting on them, maybe it's just my height, but I always have the feeling that I'm hurting my wrist in some way. It does corner though, <coughs> but those bumps, it's not made for those bumps. For sure, you do have to stand up. No. Obviously when you buy such a bike, you buy it for a reason. Either you like the love, either you love the looks of it, uh, or you're doing it for a security days, or you're going ape shit on it on another way, this is a dead end. Don't care. I mean let's be honest, up front it doesn't look bad. Oh wait, wait we're just being, we're just being dumb, you have to take the strap off. This one actually has quite a lot of space. Yeah, not too bad. And then the strap back on. I 
you would anticipate. So what it does has is single disc up front brake and a single rear brake disc. Now on the dashboard itself it has your it's almost the same as the CB500X. So it has your gears, your RPM, your speed, the time, your total kilometers and the uh, fuel per 100 kilometers and the uh, temperature of the bike at this moment we're doing 4.1 liters per 100 kilometers and then of course you have your high beam low beam uh, fork horn indicator start button and alarm lights and that's it nothing too fancy I'm not quite sure if this is the same 500 engine as the CBX. A lot of it seems the same. However, the CBX was the, the A2 version and this is not the A2 version. So that could also explain the difference in power. I'm quickly doing this loop because I know there are some beautiful corners here. And that is where a bike like this would excel in corners so it's just six gears uh, engine braking isn't that impressive I went from six to third you hardly knew anything this is an interesting piece of the road. Whee! <laughs> you can say what you want, but acceleration, of course, is very, very good. Even for 500cc. It is, however, also getting hot. Which is at some moments you feel. I've tested so many bikes and yet so very few super sports or sport bikes. And yet. So a lot of this stuff is just, you know kind of based on my normal experience and kind of based on my GPZ400R that I had, the Kawasaki but that was an oldie and this is a very new one so obviously there are some changes in between those two by the way I had the feeling that the <coughs> GPZ had less of a problem with bumps like this one That bump, especially, it just got launched. <sighs> and a more experienced rider can probably toss the bike faster in those corners than I do. Uh, partly is experience and partly is the fact that I just can't see some of those corners. So it might seem a bit boring but I'm enjoying myself and it's a very enjoyable machine. That was a lot of noise for not a lot of movement. Come on, guy. That was really, really slow. I 
and for me that was quite aggressive. <laughs> it's quite a soft seat to a certain level. So it is forgiving if you hit a bump and you just fly off your seat, saddle and land back onto it. Shouldn't do it at those speeds probably, because your balls will get hurt. Uh, but it is forgivable, a little bit. It's quite comfy. So long distance riding, saddle wise, yes. Steer wise, yeah, that depends on what you're used probably. I won't most likely. Because for me, my wrists are not happy with the position they are in. Yes, I have a lot of noise in the helmet. But the windscreen is pointing the wind more to my chest than to my helmet. So my head helmet stays stable. No shakiness, no excessive noise or extra noise. I like how smooth it is in the slower corners. It's not jerky. Dude. Sounds like a bike somewhere. Yeah it is. <laughs> You know, that one I can hear, this one is quite soft. So a uh, aftermarket exhaust won't hurt the bike at all. That's your hundred. Seems like the African twin was quicker. <laughs> Then again, more CCs. So logical. One thing I did enjoy doing with my GPZ Kawa was jumping curbs. I know sports bikes are less <coughs> fun at that, but it does it. It isn't happy with it, but it does it. Twelve uur.